All right, there's no time like the present to start filming. Uh, what's up, everybody? How's it going? So um, this is basically a follow-up to the stream that I filmed last night and went live, but subsequently, unfortunately, deleted uh, kind of by accident. Um, I discovered later on that it was still uploading, I guess, the full resolution version. I didn't know that that was a thing and uh, thought that I would just stop that upload because a, a 33 minute video would probably take at least a week. Uh, and so anyway, I deleted the whole thing and unbeknownst to me, there were a couple of comments that were made on the video, so my apologies. But anyway, there was some information in that video that I kind of wanted to share with you again because I kind of feel like with this build, which has been pretty much ongoing since October. I finally reached basically like a breakthrough point with it yesterday and today. And so the finer points are some things that I wanted to go back over with you and kind of cover um, just because I'm this deep into this thing. Um, I almost wanted to kind of throw my hands up and just walk away from the project, but um, I kind of realized how close I was and realized I had like all the parts and pieces and everything sitting in front of me. So get it, get it working and working. I did. Um, so earlier this week, uh, I placed well later last week and then stuff really showed up earlier this week, but I placed an order for, um, some 60 RPM and 40 RPM and 20 motors. Um, and I got those because the, the stock motors, as far as I'm concerned, I think are a little bit higher RPM than what I would personally prefer. I think the wheel speed is good in some situations, but they're, I think, uh, a little difficult to control with low speed and so on and so forth. It's kind of all or nothing with those. And so um, at some point I am going to be installing these to give them a try. But last night, um, I while I was live, I soldered everything up and just kind of like a, as a proof of concept, um, as far as running the 60 RPM up front and the 40 RPM in the back, uh, you know, essentially for like a 33% overdrive, I kind of wanted to prove that whole thing. And not only that, I wanted to get, uh, everything working with the radio, uh, with two ESCs and stuff. So, um, pretty much had that all set. Everything was good. Um, completely overjoyed at the fact that everything worked A-OK -okay and exactly as, as it should. Um, so with that, I kind of pretty much quite literally put it all to bed and woke up this morning and decided to reapproach the whole thing again. And with a functioning um, radio system and with DIG and everything working, which I'll show you here in a second, um, I decided to install it and run it and test it with the stock motors to see how everything works. And um, it's fine. Uh, I think my problem still exists that I'm only running, I think this is the 5AX2 and I need the 10AX2. Um, these still kind of brown out just a little bit, especially the rear. The front seems to not really have too much of a problem, but the, the rear definitely under serious load um just kind of just can't quite keep up and that's even with overdrive uh engaged and maxed out so um with all of the talk of dig and overdrive and everything let me at least show you the functionality of that so let me get some of this stuff set aside um there's still talk to be had about the whole radio setup which i'll share with you in just a second so um, not only did, uh, N20 motors arrive, uh, I bought a fly sky G7 P, um, because of its capability of channel mixing. So, um, with that, uh, why don't I talk about this ESC and everything, and then I'll kind of demo everything for you as far as like how it works. This is probably the most critical, important part about the video. So why don't I get that out of the way first? And then you guys can just, you know, click on something else if you want. Um, this is not the exact radio that's in here. I only have this as an example. And so the example that you need to see has been tucked in and put away. 
and I didn't want to pull the roof or anything like that to show you. Um, but basically, I will provide a link. Basically, it's the stock radio that comes with the G7P is exactly what you need. I think it's a seven channel uh, with also light capability, light controller. That's exactly what this thing is. Um, not only is it a multi-channel multi-function, it also has light control and stuff like that too. So the, the radio that comes with this has a ton of ports in it. Um, this one does not, but the ports that you're going to use for setting up dig and stuff like that are only basically three or four deep. So that's pretty much all you need. So let me pull everything away from here, unplug stuff, and I'll show you exactly what goes on. Obviously servo is always going to occupy channel one. So go ahead and plug that in with your positive and the appropriate side. Now, these ESCs with the dual output that have channel mixing come with a separate single yellow control wire, wire that's for signal. And then they also have a standard three wire plug, which would of course be your power and signal to everything for motor control. Um, what you wanna do is on the back side of this connector, it's got a small keep, small little catch. You'll want to lift that up with like a pair of tweezers or an X-Acto knife or what have you. And you'll just want to release that recessed female pin from the connector. And that part of it is all set. I know that sounds tough. It's super easy. Just make sure that you don't break that off if you want to be able to put that back in. And it's super easy to do. Just very gently lift that up and just go ahead and remove the red wire because the red wire and the yellow wire are gonna pair up on channel two. So first of all, like I said, you've got the ESC plugged in, or excuse me, the ESC. You've got the servo plugged into channel, channel one with radio. Now let's go ahead and take the yellow signal wire and that's gonna plug into the same positive side on the radio. Now you take your red power wire that's from your connector and that's going to occupy the positive side of channel two. Hang on a second. Okay. Um, once those are both plugged in, then you're going to want to take the main power lead and go ahead and occupy channel three. Now you can occupy three and four if you have your winch or whatever set up on two, or if you wanna just bounce your winch to channel four and reprogram something to be a part of the mix to be able to recontrol with the G7, you've got seven channels to be able to choose from. So you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, I like to do it just sort of sequentially and not have any open ports and plus two, the both with them side by side like that kind of helps keep both of those single leads kind of semi-protected. So I'm not going to power this up because I don't have a means to be able to show you because this, again, is not the right radio. The right radio is buried in here. So once all of that's all set up and you're mounted and so on and so forth, um, obviously you'll have normal front and rear, excuse me, forward and, and reverse. Now, once you disengage overdrive and you click dig, right now overdrive is engaged. And you see what I'm doing? If you can see the tape marks, you get on the fly overdrive adjustment with the rear axle to the point where you can do matched speed. And since you're in overdrive, essentially it's also sending a little bit more power to the front axle for all four wheel overdrive, which is kind of nice. So not only do you get on the fly adjustment for the rear axle, it's overdriving both axles.
Now, in order for Dig to be able to work, you're going to want to back out of overdrive, the maximum amount of overdrive, and put that into the neutral speed, which is on your VR1 knob up on the top. All right. Dig is pretty effective. I will say it works pretty sweet. Front axle on this has definitely got a little bit more power than the rear. So it can push push beyond it, but for the most part, you see what's happening, so. Now, the only problem, like I said, that I've had would be that the rear motor still kind of browns out a little bit and not too much of an issue other than the fact on steep climbs it it just won't it just won't so um definitely yeah i think when my next my next move is to uh order the 10 ax2 from china wait for a couple three weeks to that to get here install that thing maybe take a look at installing the the 60 rpm and the 40 rpm um i do like the wheel speed but i don't think you need that much for a crawler this size it's it just it's not necessary and if i could show you the difference between the two it's it's pretty amazing um and so if you can kind of imagine like if you've run any furitech brushless um how slow how, how low the RPMs of, of the motors are. It, it's kind of the difference almost between what you just saw and seeing like a Fury Tech and an SEX24 run for like the first time. Um, and those two little, the 60 and the 40 RPM seem to have an incredible amount of torque. So with those considerations, I think that it would probably be worth it to at least throw them in here and see if there's any way that you can really just throw a ton of power at the axles uh, and, and really get it to crawl very well. So it's crawling probably about 70% of the way to where I want it to be. Now Dig is working, so that battle has been officially won. Um, again, I'll include all the links to everything that you're gonna need to be able to set that stuff up uh, in the description. Uh, any questions, any comments, please feel free to drop them in the, you know where. Um, hit the like if you want. Um, subscribe if you have not already, please. Um, oh, there is a thumbs down bot, I think, that stops by on every single video now that I post. And so I at least get like one thumbs down on pretty much every video, which is kind of funny. Um, so you know you can always counteract that by hitting the thumbs up if you want uh give that a like oh what else stop begging for likes um <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed the video this thing is finally finally getting so much closer to being where i want it to be and uh yeah hopefully hopefully it's all that when it's done thanks for watching i'll talk to you soon We'll see you next week.